Okay, so now for the second part of the tutorial on the guitar solo to Brainbox's recording of Summertime. We're gonna take a look at all the licks involved there. The solo starts off in the last measure of the la vocal verse before the guitar solo and basically starts off with a very bluesy phrase in the fifth position. <laughs> So that's basically 7th fret on the D string going to the 5th fret on the G string, 7th fret on the G string, and then there's 3 bends up. Release, pull off, 7th fret on the G, D string, back to the G string, and that note is sustained for 2 whole beats, and at the end there's quick slide up to the 14th position. Then we go to the tenth position and we play the A on the D, B string, sorry. Play the G on the G string and bend that up to the A. So this is the bend is repeated four times. And then the pattern is reversed and the A is played first. And followed by the G on the G string, that's the 12th position. And then there's a full step bend on the 13th fret on the high E string. Followed by a bend on the 12th position. So we get... And notice how those notes are kept short. After this, the 12th position is played without a bend. Then there's another bending lick. Basically a standard blue thing. 15th position on the B string, bending up a whole step. To the high E on the E string. 12th fret. And again, a whole step bend from the 15th fret, this time on the, a on the high E string, up to the A. This is followed by a, basically the blues scale. And again, a bluesy thing. So we get that whole phrase. And that gets us through the A minor chord. Then, and basically, this is all very typical blues playing. Then there's a bunch, uh, bit of chromatism going on over the D minor chord, and it's played from the 12th position, starting on the D. And then the D an octave higher is played, but there's a, bend, a, sli a small slide from the 14th position into that one. So this takes us from the D string to the B string. 14th fret. And now, instead of continuing on the B string, he shifts to the G string and plays a G sharp. So that's the 13th fret on the G string and 12th fret. Then a chromatic bit on the high E string, but small variation, instead of playing 15, 14, 13, 12, he actually plays 16, 15, 13, 12. So he plays and that last tag there is 13-12 on the B string 
And then the way to play this is to roll the index finger on the G string and then slide back two frets. And again, here's. small lick with a bend in it. So that goes... And this phrase is continued by a re repetitive pattern. It's a ninth fret on the G string. Hammer on on the 10th. And the way I play this most comfortably is by going to the D string and using the 10th fret for the D. And that is for me the way to play it and get a phrasing right. It's also possible to keep it all on the G string. But that, that gives me a slightly different phrasing. And basically it's one pattern repeated four times. After which there's, there's a downward spiraling section on the G string. So that's basically... Just on the last bit, the, the triplet feel is not sustained. And here it's just straight 16 notes. And the thing ends on the A note. And we're back in an A minor chord here. And now we get a very similar chrom chromatic pattern to the one we had before, but this time on the seventh position. So that's exactly the same start as we had here. Now from the seventh. And this time he just stays in position. No stretching, just eight, seven, six, five on the high E string. And now there's an interesting chromatic uh, thing again. So that's eight and seven on the B string. Now we move to the fifth position from the seventh. So we're in the fifth position and it's on the G string middle finger to index so that's six five and then the same thing on the B string and now we move these fingers to the D string again in the seventh position and this actually is very re reminiscent of uh, Jungle Reinhardt's playing you may recall this kind of stuff well, and obviously John Garana pretty much only could use his index and middle finger. That's why I came up with those kind of riffs. And Jan Ackermann actually worked out quite a lot of guitar solos by John Garana. So it, I, I think it's quite possible that this particular section is highly influenced by all the stuff he worked out from John Garana. <laughs> There's a bluesy pattern again. So again, this is basically... Yeah, anyway, slightly different phrasing. And that's on the A and the D string. And there's a bend up on the D string, a whole step. And again, the second time it's actually pretty much pre-bend, release, pull off, but so far most of the solo is really playable. But for the last bit, there's a couple of really fast runs going on. 
Before we get there, however, there's a couple of octaves. And he starts off that section with the open D string. Then there's an octave on the D string and the B string on the seventh position. And actual, the, actually, the note on the uh, D string is it's slightly before the other one. Then this octave moves up to the twelfth position, and so it becomes a D. And he does a small slide. One fret with the pinky there. And this is followed by an arpeggio, basically over a C sixth chord. I'm sorry, it's not a C6, it's a C sus4. And at the end of that, first he goes... Then he goes back to the E on the D string, that's the 14th position, and he does the same pattern, but instead of fretting it, he bends. So the, and the whole thing is preceded by a small rake across muted strings. <laughs> Moving to the tenth, to the eighth position. <laughs> so that's tenth on the B string, eighth on the high E string, ten on the high E string, with a couple of bends up. Band, rele band, release, pull off, and there's the 8th fret on the B string. Now, the slide from the 9th to the 7th, pull off to the 5th, 7th on the D string, 6th to 5th on the B, 7th on the uh, G string, and after this is a chromatic run down on the high E string, 8, 7, 6, 5, pull off, and the, the, the A, the 5th fret, is actually the beginning of the next bar, and this is a very fast section. Uh, with a complicated rhythm, which I'm not sure I noticed notated exactly as played. For this, it's actually best to really slow down the recording and practice it along with the recording once you've got fingering down. So, so it starts off with a triplet, and this is probably a pull off. I'm not sure. Starting on the fifth, coming out of this chromatic. This is actually hammer. This is all pull off. This one is played. So this is triplet. This is one group. So that's. So we have the fifth on the high E string. Seventh to fifth on the B string. Now we have A seven five, and this is a pull off. On the G string, and then we play the A on the D string. And again, this is in the uh, pretty much in the blues scale. Struck. Take the seventh, hammer on on the eighth, pull off to the fifth, fifth. Actually, the phrase goes to here. Then we get a bunch of triplets. 
on the D and on the G string. And now... So that's B string, 5, 8, 7, 6, 5. Roll the, the index finger to the E string. So that's 5th, 8. Again to the 5th. Slide from the 8th to the 10th. And now... section straight after the arpeggio or we do it with the arpeggio and I've got to say I'm pretty sure there's a bit of pull off here involved in this bit and this phrase actually concludes the solo. So. So I hope that helps. You've got a two speeds run through in the other video. You'll have some tap with this. Have fun with this one. <laughs>